we're going to solve an initial value problem here. This is in the partial fractions section, and it may not look like a partial fractions problem initially, but it will turn into a partial fractions. First thing we're going to do is get all the x's. Here's our equation. We're going to get all the x's on one side and all the t's on the other side. Now, based on the x uh, being in the numerator, we're going to move the t's to the right side. The way we're going to move dt is we're going to multiply by dt. And the way we're going to move this is we're going to divide by it. And that's where the partial fractions come in. Let's we'll see what that looks like. It's right down there. So we multiply by the dt on the right and divide by t squared minus 7t plus 12. All right, the other thing is the initial condition. So let's look at that. Now, this x of 7 right here, what that means is 7 is the t value and the x value is going to be 0 there on the right. So I just wrote that here. Uh, x of 7 equals 0 and it is x of t equals the x value. So when t is 7, x is 0. Okay, so let's get back to the calculus. What we need to do is basically eliminate the dx and the dt, and the way we do that is by integrating. So we're going to integrate both sides. You're allowed to, as long as you do the same thing on both sides, you're fine. So we're just integrating both sides here. Of course, there's a different variable we're integrating with respect to. All right, the left side, the integral of 1 dx is just x. There is a plus constant, but we'll deal with that later after our last integral. Now I've already uh, shown what the partial fraction decomposition is, so let's go and look how do we get that. So I wrote here in the partial fractions, on the left is what we started with. On the right, you have a linear or degree one denominator, so you put a degree zero or a constant in the numerator. And we do the same thing uh, with the other factor. Now, how did I factor this? I just factored and, and got lucky here. So it just factored nicely, and I didn't have to do anything fancy. <clears throat> okay, so how do we go about finding a and b? Well, nobody likes fractions, so we're gonna multiply by the denominator, which is t minus three times t minus four. So I have that in the light blue on the right side. It's gonna completely eliminate the denominator here, and uh, it will eliminate the t minus 3 and the t minus 4, but there's gonna, it's not going to completely cancel because the t minus 3 under the a is going to cancel the t minus 3. We're going to be left with a t minus 4 as a product, and something similar happens with b. Okay, so from here, how do we solve for a and b? Well, t can be any value, so the two smart values to pick are 4 because it will turn this into 0. And the other smart one to pick is three because it will turn this into zero. So I went ahead and picked, what did I pick? T equals four first. So that turns the coefficient next to A into a zero. And of course you gotta put in four in for T right here. So you have four minus three is one. So you have one equals zero plus B or one equals B. <clears throat> in this particular uh, equation, it doesn't, you don't have to plug back in because the other t value you're going to choose is 3, and that's going to completely eliminate the uh, b term. But in case you can't do that, sometimes it's smart to plug back in. We have a b is 1, and I plug that value in right there. Uh, so then you plug in t equals 3, which I did right here. That turns this term into a 0. And so you get a negative a equals one, which means a equals negative one. And then you go ahead and plug that back into the original where you have the uh, two fractions, except you had an a and a b. Now you have the two numbers. Okay, so we'll take that back to the integral now, right up here. And I've already split it, split the addition, uh, the integral across addition here. Now these are both going to turn into natural logs. So you're going to see natural logs going to show up a lot. Anytime you have a degree one denominator, it's going to be a natural log. You can also guess and check. So you can say, all right, what is the derivative of ln of t minus three? It's one over t minus three. And of course that negative sign makes it negative. Very similar on the t minus four. Okay, so this is our answer except we're sitting here with a constant that we need to figure out. 
the way we're going to find that is use the x and the t value that we saw at the very beginning up here. So when t is 7, x is 0. We're going to plug in those values. Come on, scroll down. There we go. When t is, oh no. Big mistake. When t is 7, x is 0. All right. So we've got some erasing to do. All right. So that'll change that, 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 that. That, that and all that. Okay, t is seven, x is zero. So we have seven minus three, seven minus four. Uh, these are absolute values here, so if they happen to be negative, you're just gonna take the positive. So we have ln four, ln three. We're gonna subtract ln three to the other side and add ln four. And this may actually be what I had written originally, luckily, but that was only by luck. Uh, so this is our constant. So now we're going to put in that value here for C. And that is plus ln 4 minus ln 3. And that is our answer here. And this is x as written as a function of t.